My name is Andrew Boss. I'm an associate professor at Wright State University in the biology department, and my specialty is neuromuscular physiology. Here, it's sort of a mix of teaching and research. Uh, it's a nice mix. The research is on neuromuscular physiology. Uh, we look at actually neurodegenerative diseases and find aspects in the muscle that are wrong, skeletal muscle. Um, for teaching, I'm in a basic bio department. So because of my expertise, they teach a lot of upper division courses on physiology, um, but I'm also teaching some now more basic courses to talk to the freshmen, teach basic bio, things like that. What I'm doing with the research part at a university is, it's called basic research. It's basically discovery-based research. So it, it's the research you do to initiate new discoveries. Universities can do that because we don't have to generate a profit necessarily, right? You can come up with new discoveries, a lot of ideas fail. Um, so it's the initial discoveries, like for example, we're studying skeletal muscle and Huntington's disease. And first goal is just to find there actually are problems in skeletal muscle in the Huntington's disease, which wasn't known, right? So no drug company is going to target that initially because they didn't even think there was a problem there. And then we figure out mechanistically what's wrong, which could be many things. But once we get some discoveries, then there's new candidates, new targets for drugs. So like most universities, it's really at that basic level, discovery level. Students then get involved in that research so they can see that that discovery level right at the beginning and then carry it on. Once we get new candidates, new targets, then industry can come in. Like a pharmaceutical company could say, oh, okay, wow, that's actually wrong in Huntington's disease. We have a drug that targets that molecule. And then it may go from there. My name is Steve Burke. I'm a research associate in Dr. Voss's muscle physiology lab here at Wright State University in the biological sciences department. We study nerve and skeletal muscle function. We do a lot of electrophysiology and study single muscle fibers, electrical properties and different ion channels on the muscle membrane. We specifically look at Huntington's disease and previous experiments in the lab, we found a number of different uh, muscle defects. This system, this is all force, so we can do in situ and anesthetize mice, or we can take muscles out of the mouse completely and do ex vivo muscle experiments. The idea of this is to take some of those defects that we um, have found in the single muscle fibers and see if they affect overall muscle performance by looking at muscle force and muscle contraction. So this specific mouse is a Huntington's disease mouse. Um, and then we can take force measurements from Huntington's disease and then compare that with um, wild type litter mates and then see if there's any differences. We're a little unique in the biology department. Uh, a lot of labs do molecular biology, which is Westerns, Western blots, and PCR. And in a way, you take the cells and you extract out DNA and proteins from them, but you no longer study the live cell. It's really important, but one different thing about the physiology is you actually have the live animal or you keep the tissue alive and we study what's really happening in real time. And we tend to focus on a lot of what's called electrophysiology, right? So the signals from your nerve to your muscle and through your muscle, if you need really fast signaling, you use electrical impulses. And so we study those elect that electrical signaling, electrical communication. Um, for example, we can stimulate the nerve and see how the nerve is communicating with the muscle electrically. Um, so you actually have to put electrodes in a cell and you see the electrical signals in real time. But a lot of it, there's been a lot of advances in um, microscopy. And so we're able to incorporate that. So that's kind of fun. I guess we use some advanced optics, not too advanced. I guess it's not, it's kind of cutting edge. Um, but we combine it with the electrophysiology, but the optics are nice. They develop, they're called fluorophores. So it's a molecule that um, gets excited with one wavelength of light, but then emits a different color. So you can put filters in and use that. Um, that's kind of cool. Like we, turns out when muscle works, the key signal is calcium goes up. So an increase in calcium inside the cell. So we can put a fluorophore that's specific for calcium inside the muscle cell. And then when you excite it with an electrical activity, there's a flash of light because the calcium binds its fluorophore and then suddenly it emits more light. You get to see these simultaneous records of electrical activity combined with the flash of light 
And however bright the light is tells you how much calcium increased in the cell. So sort of a combination of optics and electrophysiology for a lot of our studies. And here, this is very similar to what Keisha uses to measure the neuromuscular junction, except uh, the objective is on the bottom. Uh, the difference being, you can maybe see the dish perfusion chamber with a glass bottom. You can see how we drilled it out with a lathe. When you put your, the muscle fibers will sit on the bottom of that dish. And then when the objective comes in, it's right below the muscle fiber. So we can put the objective very close to the muscle fiber. We don't have to worry about electrodes in the way. And we get really good optics of it. Um, the electrodes then come from the top down to the muscle fiber. Uh, that's kind of fun. We have better optics. So this is the cells where we'll put a fluorophore inside the cell that monitors calcium. So we can measure the action potential, which is the electrical signal that tells the muscle to contract, and that causes the calcium to release. So we get electrical record simultaneously with the optic showing the calcium release. And the calcium goes up, binds the fluorophore, and emits more light. And so then we just measure the amount of light that comes from the muscle fiber. I don't actually do the experiments because the students need to do that. In order to be a scientist, you have to be a scientist, right? So the students do the experiments. To get them going, I may give them a project um, and then leave it open for them to develop their own projects. So they go through the process. If they need to, I'll give them an idea and they go test it. And then I always leave it open though, if they have their own ideas, then they can run with them too. But they basically go in and fail and succeed and do what you need to do. It's sort of learn by doing, I guess. So here's the experiment, here's what we're after. Go figure it out. And then when they fail, they bring the data to me, or it's not really, like I said, it's not really a failure. It's expected, oh yeah, well, I've done that too. And then if they have problems, I might come in and try to help. And the only reason I can help so well is because I've made the same mistakes many times over myself. So I just show them how to do it. So hopefully that's the beauty of, you know, here, you don't do anything real in college till you leave. I, I get that for some majors except science. If you're working in a lab, that's not actually true. You actually get to be a scientist. And their goal is to go in, do the science, and they help write the paper, and they also become published authors when it's all done because they actually contribute to it. So I'm actually designing a new experiment. We're gonna be testing sensitivity to acetylcholine. Each muscle cell has one neuromuscular junction. It's where the nerve cell and the muscle cell interact. That's where you're gonna get the acetylcholine released. When the nerve wants to tell the muscle to contract, it releases acetylcholine. And we think that there might actually be a change in like how sensitive the muscle is to that acetylcholine. So I'm just getting some preliminary data today to see if this experiment's working. So in order to work with the muscle, what we have to do is um, take two glass electrodes. You have to stick them in a, in a single cell, which is challenging. So all we do is you take a glass capillary, slide it in and the capillary will go into that heated filament on the inside. It'll pull and heat. And as it pulls, it thins and thins and then breaks. And it'll be a very fine point at the end. And that's the end. We fill it with a solution, an electrode, and we can stick it in the muscle cell at that point and measure the electrophysiology from the inside compared to the outside. I think the most inspiring part about the work is the opportunity to make a discovery. You just, you can't replicate that anywhere else. To have an idea, your own idea, and then test it and find out it's correct. I don't know, the, the coolest thing, sometimes it's a lot of work, you lose sight of it, but there's a point where, okay, so you have an idea, you read some papers and you think, no, what, they're wrong. You know, like, remember we got into Huntington's, I think this group did this work, but they actually, I think they completely missed the boat. So then you order, they have your idea, I think this is what's wrong. So we ordered the mice with the disease and we checked. We found out we were right. That always feels kind of cool, right? And then you realize when you analyze the data at some point, you, you have this discovery, you realize, wow, I'm, I'm the only person on the planet that actually knows this is true, right? Because it's new, new knowledge. So you can't, you don't get to do that in a lot of other places. Like, I'll have to talk to students about 
they want to either go to med school or do I pursue a career in research? And my thought on it is kind of like for research, or do you have like this childlike curiosity? Do you really want to know why? Then research is a better path. If you're happy with the answer, not necessarily why, med school is a little better. They don't give clinicians enough time to worry about why so much. If you have to see a lot of patients and you give them a drug and if it works, they feel better. Yay. You know, if it doesn't work, change the dose and try again. But finally it works. And as soon as the patient's happy, that's great. Um, you're done and you move on to the next patient. You have a heavy workload. So it's not discovery, you know what I mean? It, it, it's very important, but for science, what makes it interesting is if you have that curiosity, if you really want to know why, then you can do that in, in a research lab. In terms of like why here, one advantage here is, I guess, a, a lot of big research places, um, you end up disconnected from student up to professor, there's sort of a disconnect. You can have undergrad, grad student, then you can have postdoc and senior scientist. And you get, you see what I mean? You get this long gap between the student and their ability to actually interact with the professor. But here, they're, they're really good about keeping that narrower. So I do interact. Students get to come in here and actually really engage and work with the professors and have a good chance of being playing a major role in the research projects. 